Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to be watching KT Deft as he plays Caitlyn with a Morgana support against Ezreal and Alistar. In this lane, Deft has a solid range advantage, which will give him the push advantage as well as plenty of opportunities to harass with autos. As we break down the laning phase, we're going to focus specifically on the ways that Deft is getting harass off while also isolating concepts that you guys can replicate in your own games. With that all said, there's a few missions that Deft will want to accomplish to win this lane. First, he'll want to get control over the first wave with his wave clear advantage by outpushing Ezreal. Then after securing level 2, he'll want to harass Ezreal under turret. After Alistar hits level 2, he'll want to be careful about being comboed or flash pulverized under the turret. With that said, let's hop right into the game. Both lanes had to leash this game, which is great for exploiting the advantages that Caitlyn and Morgana have in the early game over Ezreal and Alistar. Good Ezreals will always try to get a Q on the side as lane starts, so try to be wary of that since you don't want to give them any extra kleptomancy procs. Initially, Deft is following the first mission of pushing the wave at level 1. The only threat of the enemy lane is Alistar's combo in this case, so as long as he can prevent the other side from ending level 2 first, he'll be free to abuse his range advantage and open up Morgana to land her bindings. Now that he's established his minion lead, Deft immediately moves up to start getting autos on Ezreal. Within 15 seconds of entering the lane, Deft has already gotten Ezreal to 2 thirds health while establishing a 3 caster lead. This is all going according to plan, and level 2 won't be an issue at all. As he pushes, we see Deft positioned with the casters between him and Ezreal which will make it impossible for Ezreal to get value out of his kleptomancy. As they hit level 2, Caitlyn and Morgana move up in parallel to force Alistar and Ezreal back. While the enemy team had fast reactions to this, you can often catch people off guard with an auto or spell right as you hit level 2. Here he's trying to wait as long as possible to last at these casters, so that his next incoming blue minion wave can group up with his existing wave in front of the turret. He wants to be pushing the next red minion wave without his own being hit by a turret. In short, he wants to maximize the period of time where he's going to be able to harass Ezreal. You'll see Deft positioned at the front of his minion wave, which is indicative of how aggressive he wants to play here. Every time Ezreal steps up for any of these minions, he's going to threaten him with auto attacks. When marksmen start to learn to play aggressively like this, one thing they fall behind on is missing their own farm because they're so busy denying the enemies. While harass is important, and you can really define the pace of a lane with it, you need to make sure that you're maintaining your own gold income. As Deft is weaving in harass here, we can see that he backs off to his own caster minions when he last hits, and then steps up to the melee minions when he wants to play aggressive again. As you get more comfortable playing aggressively, try watching the minion health on both sides to spot for opportunities when you can be aggressive, and moments where you have to be defensive. The way that you handle harassing your opponent when the wave gets to turret is really important. When they're trying to last hit under turret, there are defined moments where they have to walk up or they're going to lose something. You can see those moments in the minion's health and they're often dictated directly by the turret's attack speed. For example, the turret will hit a melee minion twice before it's in kill range, and between the second and third turret shot you can know that the enemy AD carry will want to last hit it, and that moment is where you'll want to look for any holes in their positioning. Being able to master this technique alone will win you more games, and you can combine it with shoving on high range champions like Caitlyn or Ash to do it consistently. The pressure Deft is putting on against the turret and Ezreal is substantial, though he has to watch out for Alistar's level 2. Another common mistake that marksmen who are learning to play aggressively make is that they focus so much on the enemy to carry's movements that they get caught up by the enemy's support. While it can be tricky to keep everything in mind, certain champions matter more to watch than others. In this case, Alistar is a huge threat when he's in flash range since he'll knock you up into the turret and end it all. Here Ezreal hits a trap and everyone immediately springs into action. Deft moves forward to get the headshot off while Alistar counters with a combo. Then Morgana goes for a QW on Ezreal who has to heal and back off, just barely dodging out of Caitlyn's Q. Then, since Alistar has used all of his abilities, he's no longer of any threat so he gets chunked out which is a clear win for Deft and Morgana. As level 3's come out, Deft is still playing really aggressively. This surprised us, though it's likely due to him really trusting his support. However, for any viewers playing with over 10 ping, we recommend playing a little bit more defensively here. Alistar ends up going for a combo on Morgana, who wasn't able to shield the knockup in time. However, with those abilities on cooldown, Alistar is a heavy paperweight, so Deft is free to hit him for a few times before backing off. And then this happens. Whenever this happens to you as an AD carry or support, alarm bells are usually going off. I mean, Monka S. Deft immediately flashes away and heals so that he buys space between him and Ezreal, and then creates more space with an EQ combo onto Alistar, while instantly throwing down a trap as he ran back, knowing that the trap will go off on the bound Alistar to allow him to proc the headshot. 
Unfortunately, Ezreal was able to follow up with his E-Flash and the fight ends in a 1 for 1. As he heads back into the lane, Deft has bought a pickaxe to Ezreal's aggressive Sheen buy. We think that this is an interesting idea from Ezreal, but overall it isn't something that seems viable since he will have such a delayed tier and his man immune spike will hit at a later point in the game and be less effective. However, Deft will have to watch out for the burst between Alistar's combo, Ezreal's sheen, and Ezreal's mobility, but he can avoid that situation from happening almost entirely through constantly pushing waves. Another reason that you want to be constantly pushing against Ezreal is that after his first buy, he can farm from range for minutes on end, and he will be happy hitting you with potshot klepto cues. Here Morgana hits a nice bind and follows it up with a perfect shield to block the initial knockup from Alistar. However, know that Alistar can use his E to follow up with the second stun, so Deft ends up getting stunned up anyways. But Deft did have great positioning here, since there was blue minions between him and Ezreal, which meant that Ezreal wasn't able to get value from his aggressive Sheen purchase in this fight. As Deft confidently moves up with the minion wave to the turret, we see more of the same positioning from earlier. Ezreal has to deal with another incoming wave at his turret, and he's going to be forced to use Qs to get CS instead of growing his Klepto gold pile. Deft is getting some great hits on Ezreal here, and he's overall being a complete nuisance. However, Nidalee just jumped over the wall right above bot lane, which forces Deft to take a bad trade as he backs off. With Lee engaging in a fight in the river, this is where things get a bit tricky. The supports will immediately want to move to help their junglers, but there's also a second game going on here. At any point, if Ezreal and Kaelin either step too close to Morgana or Alistar, either of these supports will use their CC to turn the fight around on them. This is why we're seeing Ezreal and Caitlyn be a bit tentative in following immediately, and both of them sort of waited for some type of distance to be made. Again, Deft can't walk too far forward here, until Alistar uses his combo just like this. Now, Deft is in a 1v1 against Ezreal, and he's about to look a little bit silly. He puts the trap down here to protect Ezreal's E, and then tries to force that E with his own E and Q combo. However, Ezreal calls his play instantly and E's to the side to get a forward position on Deft, but then Deft is just barely able to dodge the Mystic Shot. Because he dodged that Q from Ezreal, Deft can continue fighting here and follow up on this fantastic Dark Binding from Morgana. Deft cleans up Ezreal with a Q, and they're able to finish Alistar off as well to end the fight in a 3 for 0. Deft then quickly pushes to the turret, and uses his ult for a bit of pressure on Echo. At this point in the game, Deft is only up about 400 gold. However, against Kleptomancy, this might as well be 800, since Kleptomancy sacrifices power that you would otherwise gain from your keystone. As Deft gets back into the lane, he has Berserker Greaves and Pickaxe to Ezreal's Sheen tier. Even more importantly though, Deft is up a level. In the next 3 minutes, we'll see a couple instances where Deft and Morgana are able to leverage their level advantage by forcing fights. Here, he clears out the wave and then immediately they start the fight against Alistar and Ezreal, which he easily wins with Morgana by his side. Afterwards, they aggressively push forward to trade 1 for 1 against Ezreal behind the tier 1 turret, which causes him to lose even more XP against Death's Caitlyn. Then, a minute and a half later, they come back to force another fight, which they're easily able to win, with Nidalee being taken out as well due to the help from Lee Sin. Here, as he drops the turret for solo gold, Deft has extended his 400 gold lead from earlier into a massive 2000 gold lead just 3 minutes later. He goes on to win the game at the 15 minute mark, but the focus here is how Deft was able to control the lane from the very start. As the lane began, Deft immediately took control with his wave clear advantage, and then started immediately making use of the range advantage to chunk Ezreal out and make him play further back in the lane. The fights were still on a knife's edge due to excellent play from both supports and honestly both sides, but over time, Deft was able to win out a close fight in the bottom river. Off of that fight, the XP lead that Deft and Morgana had allowed them to engage over and over against Ezreal and Alistar, which allowed them to rapidly snowball the lane in their favor. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.